Good day and welcome to another A Week at the Plot and welcome to a rather fine bit of cardboard. So I think you can see it's covering up a good part of this bed at the moment. It's just on top of the weed membrane but I will be pulling back that weed membrane and then putting the cardboard underneath. It will blot out a lot of light. Any light that might be going through the membrane will be blotted out. And that, of course, will help suppress germination of seeds and any weed growth. So this bit of cardboard, uh, having found so little, um, Richard was able to procure this one for me. And there was just a little bit of tape on it, which I've taken off. But the other thing that was on it was some polystyrene because there was a big board in this that was being supported and protected whilst it was being transported. So if I just come back here a bit, you can see these bits of polystyrene which will be going home with me and going into our general waste bin. That has come off because obviously this is something else that you don't want on your cardboard when you're putting it down because there's no way that it's going to decompose. Oh, so happy to have found that. Right, Paul, don't just stand admiring it. Get on and do the job. That is that job done. And as I say, or as I've said before, I'll carry on trying to find cardboard, peeling back the weed membrane here and then putting the cardboard underneath. Um, that is just one layer of cardboard, obviously. You saw underneath there's still quite a lot of greenery. So over the coming, what's it going to be? December, January, February, March. We'll mostly be planting into this in April. So over the next four months, much of that greenery underneath that cardboard is just going to die back, which um, is, of course, what we want. And the worms will take the cardboard down and, and all of that type of thing. Let's just have a quick look at the garlic. Just need more strimming already. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Look. Garlic, garlic, garlic. Another one there. Another one just here. Great, so the, oh yes, and there's one, that one's about an inch, you can see there. So the garlic is coming up, that is superb. Another one there. Raw beans. No, I can't see any raw beans. No. None yet, anyway. None yet. Fingers crossed. Gosh, look at the sun. You can see it sort of flaring. Oh, it's lovely, lovely. Lovely, but no broad beans yet. 
this is just looking magnificent it's its second year of growing now it's the Nero di Toscana that cross with the Portuguese cabbage so um, you've really got the sort of crinkliness of the Nero di Toscana with the size or greater size of the the Portuguese cabbage leaf and that really is such a fantastic find and it tastes remarkable too and this one if you remember this broke off so this was a just like those just like these can you see this one it's a sort of branch I'm hitting the camera it's a branch that has grown off and one of those broke off a couple of weeks ago and I just stuck it straight in the ground no rooting powder nothing and look at it look how healthy it is extraordinary you know we do a, our nurturing of our plants we we sow the seed and we we nurture the seedlings and here's something that I was going to pull out oh, right at the beginning of this year or sort of was it May something like that I was going to pull it out because it had finished but then I wanted to save seeds from it so I left it in to save seed from I saved the seed and then I noticed at the bottom shoots were coming up just like they are here and you see there and I thought you know what I'll just leave it and then we had the visit from the RHS people and the guy said just leave it in see how perennial it goes and clearly it's doing its perennial bit that's excellent and this one has a little cutting I mean brassicas are tough things if we come around here this is another one that as I brushed past several months ago I broke this one so this was growing up here and then right up here I brushed past it I broke it bent over and look at how it's turned itself back up and is just growing perfectly I mean nature just amazes really really does oh, and then in here we've got beetroot look nice beetroot I'm gonna be taking three of those home for a stew this evening yeah and there's the darker one there but this bed needs a, a good weed but you can see there's lots of wildflowers but there's also these self-seeded pansies which are just glorious and also we've got quite a lot of the the dead nettle coming up so this is dead nettle I'm not sure if you can see let me see if I can get close to that little mo flower there so yeah that's a great source for pollinators at this time of year anyway it did get quite cold last night but uh, these potatoes are still okay I am going to cover them though maybe tomorrow and then I think in this bed which has been really overcome by clover I think this is for Celia isn't it I've got a feeling it is maybe I'm wrong but yeah it's turned from a flower border bed into a wildflower border bed but I'm not too worried about that and look at this cardoon look at it look at the color of that just magnificent really is anyway I am so glad I've got that cardboard I've just noticed there's a I've got the shadow of the phone on my face haven't I yeah I have it's a bit like the golden shot up a bit down a bit left a bit right a bit 
<laughs> it's on my chin as well. That's not really going to suit. I'm going to pop in the shed. I think it's fair to say that I am content after today's jaunt to the plot. It feels good to have made a decent inroad into the covering of that bed with cardboard. Thank you to Patricia, said this before, for giving us that weed membrane, which has helped reduce growth underneath it. Now having that cardboard layer underneath, obliterating light is just going to be so good. And of course, it's a big chunk of cardboard taking up a big chunk of that bed. There was a bit of cardboard that we put down earlier on a few weeks ago when we put that membrane down. I think there was some cardboard already there and that it has started um, being taken down into the ground by worms. So that is breaking down already. And I just feel as though maybe things are beginning to I'm beginning to get on top of things. That's what I feel. I'm beginning to get on top of things. I've got plenty of time to get on top of things over the coming months, of course. But yeah, so pleased to have that cardboard. Thank you, Richard. And so pleased to have it under that weed membrane now. Oh, a little robin dancing. Oh, two robins dancing around. I'll see if I can get them in a minute. Oh, how absolutely lovely. And I'm... Oh, oh they were almost fluttered into the shed. No, they've... Oh, bless, bless. Um, where was I? What was I talking about? I don't really know. Brassicas. Yes, I'm going to be down to do some brassica cares tomorrow, I think. Do a bit of tidying up around the, the plot. Not a huge amount. But I'll show you what I'm doing if I am down. I do have a, a day at my desk on Thursday, so I know I won't be down then. So I'd like to get some more work done tomorrow. And the, I was going to say the eagle-eyed of you, you don't need to be an eagle to have spotted this new watering can. My plastic watering cans are deteriorating, so it's time to say goodbye to them because I don't want them breaking up and leaving um, bits of plastic in the soil. So when we were at home base the other day for something, Richard and I saw a whole host of watering cans. Actually, you may have seen them on PV or um, Instagram. They were red watering cans and the handle was to the people walking up to it, to the customer. And they looked a bit like sort of like those Easter Island faces all in a line on the shelf. It was quite bizarre. Anyway, these galvanized watering cans were next to them. 15 pounds and I thought you know what I've got a little bit of money that I put away from something I was given earlier in the year I will get one and that is what I have done and I generally like to get one of something even if I need two so that I can try it out for a period of time and if I like it I then go and buy the other one if I need to or if I don't find it's quite right serviceable of course but if I find it's not quite right I know to look for a different model but the one that I the reason I like this one is the handle is completely wibbly wobbly which is great and this can fit right up against the tap of the um, our allotment taps which is really what I need so yeah super um, so it's um, maneuverable that's the thing maneuverable and I was just talking to, when I was doing the, the Braskers, I was talking to a fellow plot neighbour here and uh, she had come over and she's given me this. Isn't that lovely? She said that's for all the, the, the work that you do at the allotment for us all. Thank you. So, you know, it's, it's lovely when you know that work that you're doing and there's quite a few people here on the, the site that do a lot of work for, for the, the site as a whole. But it's really nice to know that that work is appreciated. So, yeah, that quite touched me, that. Anyway, I am going to go and I will see you maybe tomorrow. And I think we might have a little talk about wildlife whilst I'm doing a few other things. 
and the robins have darted off so I don't think I'm going to get them but I will just sit on my chair out there watching the sun go down for five minutes it's 25 to 4 and who knows the robins may come back or they may not see you very soon bye Good day. Just popped down to get some beetroot for a stew this evening and noticed that the potatoes just sort of to the right of the middle of the screen there have been bitten by frost. Oh, I should have covered them, but never mind. Never mind. That doesn't really matter at all. I am just going to cover them in a bit of fleece. We're getting a little bit warmer over the coming days, so maybe they'll recover. I mean, I didn't really expect them to do anything anyway. Um, so, yeah, not, not really too much of a, a worry. If they were in pots, I would have taken them into the polytunnel and even fleeced them in there, in fact. So, um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll look at fleecing them before I go. But I just wanted to show you the beetroot I picked because I'm not quite sure my hands are so cold today that I wasn't holding the camera right so I'm not sure you actually saw me picking anything so let me just show you what I've picked today so yes beetroot all de -chiodia. and these were modular sown so several seeds in one module and then planted out when they were well established seedlings and these came from one module but I think there's three others still growing that have been left there this one came from another module and there are two more growing so they'll carry on growing and this one actually was a seed in a module well it wasn't in a module on its own, but it was the only seed that germinated and came to fruition. So it just went in. And you can see it's, it doesn't look that much bigger than this large one, but it's maybe half the size again. So, yeah, maybe there's a highly scientific experiment to be done with modular sowing a single seed in a set of modules in one seed tray and multi sowing in another. I think I'll make a note to do that next year. But yeah, I'm pretty pleased with these. These are going to go into a bog standard stew we're going to have this evening. Bog standard, but no potatoes in it because we're going to have it over brown rice. So no potatoes. But um, I think I might do some beans to put in with it as well, just to make sure we're having enough protein. Though we did have eggs for lunch, so, you know, we most probably had enough protein for today. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I will give them a scrub, and when they're, when they're a little bit rough at the top here, I'll actually peel that off. But I will leave most of the, the skin on. So, yeah. There we are. And people will say to me, oh, are you going to eat the leaves as well? Um, where the leaves aren't too mottled, we will be eating them. So I won't be picking any brassicas for today. Right, I'm going to leave it there. I will see you over the weekend for a final segment of A Week at the Plot. I was down with Vanessa yesterday and we had a really productive day, which was really good. Good day at my desk this morning and now I'm going to go home and make a cup of tea and think about the stew while doing a little bit more writing. See you very soon. Bye.
Good day and welcome to a rather damp Sunday morning at the plot and quiet actually I haven't seen anyone here yet it's only about 9 30 chicken people have obviously been down because I can see that chickens have been fed and watered but yeah it's quiet apart from the M4 which I can hear in the background it's about two miles away and actually where we live there's always that little hum of the M4 but you know you get used to it just like you get used to Heathrow kicking out all those planes but I did notice there's a job just one job I have to do before I go if we come over here you can see that Portuguese cabbage in the middle is at a bit of a jaunty angle we've had quite a bit of wind yesterday and clearly the tie here has broken away rotted and broken away from the rebar so yeah this is a, a metal rebar so I'm going to just get something to tie that upright I think I've got rubber tree um, bands you know that you use to tie trees in um, so actually I think that would be quite good and there's no breeze at the moment but I think as we do have plenty of rebars I think I will knock rebars into each of the brassicas brassicas really don't like being rocked and this one did fall over obviously because I tied it up it fell over early in the in the year so its roots have clearly established for it to grow and grow well but not to stabilize it very often brassicas don't need staking particularly if they get their roots right down there and get themselves nice and sturdy but this one yeah needs help and you know what as I've got the rebars I might as well do the others but I will do this one today and the others another day what I have noticed is oh we've got some turnips coming and you see in there those will be ready to be picked in about a week maybe you might not be able to see but there's all of the garlic is now up not one missing but not a single broad bean as yet hey ho right i'm gonna get into the poly and get on with another job i still have these charred and spinach seedlings to sort that my plot neighbor gave me so i'm going to put some in the bed here you can see that some of the um, parsley has been eaten. I'm going to put some in the bed here where there are spaces and the others I'm going to put into the larger module trays, these larger module trays. I'm not sure if you can see those. Um, I'll get one out and just show you. You can see there the size of modules that these were sewn into originally and these are what I'm going to put them up into now. They are, you can see they're, they're quite a bit bigger and these really do need new compost to grow well and grow on. So that's what I'm going to do. You've seen me do this type of thing before but basically what I'm going to do is fill this up by about three quarters with compost and then I will take one single module out and pop a single module into here and then fill it up with compost and then gently firm it in and any that are going in down here will just be gently firmed in down here so let me get on and do that so that's these potted on mainly spinach um, there's some chard in there and the rest of the chard has gone into spaces in this bed as I suggested it would 
so that's great I've obviously cleaned the trays so that I can give those back to my plot neighbor because they're her trays um, I did find on the bench a tea a tree tie so I'm going to use that for that Portuguese cabbage that had bent over everything is well everything needs a bit of a tidy as you can see but this area here at least is a bit tidier than it was with these potted up lavender cuttings doing fine there's roots coming out the bottom not sure if we've seen those before but that's that's good to see and then if we come over here these are the cuttings of hot and top fig at the back and geranium that I took from mum's patio garden and also just on the other side of her her wall back in July and everything's beginning to die back a bit now take that brown leaf off and I do think these need a little bit of protection so I'm just gonna pop a lid on them I'll leave the slats at the top just slightly open they're not going to be doing a huge amount of growing at the moment because they're sort of going into dormancy but um, I'm in two minds whether to take these back home or not and have them nearer the house where it will be warmer than down here if I decide to keep them down here I will put some newspaper or brown paper underneath which will just add a little bit of insulation to the bottom as well but yeah I'll think on those right I'm going to give these to our plot neighbor or back to our plot neighbor and use that tree tie for that Portuguese cabbage With that Portuguese cabbage, all I have done is brought it back into an upright position that it was in earlier this week. So it's remedial work that I have done. I think what had happened, or I know what has happened, is the twine has rotted away that I used to tie it up a few months ago. And either the weight of the brassica leaves or wind has made it fall forwards. And all I have done is I brought it back into the same upright position or about the same upright position that it was in a few days ago. And then obviously use the tree tie there, which I've got plenty of here, to tie it to the rebar. Obviously, if you are doing this and you're using twine and you're using bamboo, then, you know, you're doing exactly the same process as I am, but you're just using different implements. And I've looked at the other brassicas and of course some of them have grown at a different angle. They're not fully upright. And when I do stake those next week, I'm not going to be pulling those upright. I'm going to be steadying them. I'm going to be stabilizing them in the way that they have already grown because they've grown like that over several months. So where something is sort of going at an angle, I'm just going to put a rebar in and then use the tree tie there to steady it so that when the winds do come it doesn't rock what you don't want to do with plants particularly brassicas of this age at this time of year is pull them upright from a position where they have grown for months sort of at a different angle or not sort of but at a different angle because all you're doing then is you're destabilizing the root ball down below you're most probably tearing some of those roots that are already stabilizing it and you're going to break them and destabilize it and most probably demature a little as well it will demature the plant a little and it will grow less well over the coming months so yeah 
with some that are at an angle I'll just be putting a rebar in and making sure that they are stable in the plane of growth that they're already growing. So that's it for this week's A Week at the Plot. It's been a funny week this week for both Richard and I. Richard, of course, has been back at full-time work. I went to Vanessa on Thursday rather than earlier in the week when I usually go to her. Um, we've had a bereavement. Uh, Richard's Auntie Bev has died. If you watch a week um, Sunday chat, you'll know about that. So it's been a bit of a sort of odd week all in all. It's It's... It's not been busy, but it's been full, if you see what I mean. And next week, I don't know what I'm going to be doing at the plot. Will I be sowing peas in modules? Possibly. If I'm going to do that, I do need to check whether I have enough compost, because I'm not sure after potting these up that I do. So yeah, things to think about for next week. As I say, many of the things that happen here are just impromptu and I come down and do jobs. Some I do plan. I did want to sow peas. I think it's a bit late for us to sow them outside, particularly now that I see that the broad beans aren't doing. Well, they, I'm sure they are doing, but they're taking their time to come up. So yeah, I'll think about the peas. I'll think about the peas. Anyway, if you've got any comments, please leave them below. Um, if you've got any questions, do please feel free to ask them. And I will see you again very soon on Planet Vegetaria. And I'll see you on YouTube. I'll see you on YouTube for another A Week at the Plot in a week's time. But first, you need to have got to the end of this one, which I hope you have done. And if you have, I say bananas to you. See you soon. Bye.